In the vast expanse of the Milky Way galaxy, countless alien civilizations had risen and fallen over millions of years, but none had ever matched the sheer power and ambition of humanity. For eons, the human race had slumbered, recovering from the devastating wars that nearly tore them apart. As they dreamed, alien empires sprouted like weeds, spreading across the stars, blissfully unaware of the slumbering giant in their midst. Emperor Marcus Aurelius stood on the bridge of his flagship, the HMS Invictus, gazing out at the sea of stars before him. Today marked a momentous occasion, the day he would be crowned as the first human emperor of the galaxy. It had been a long and bloody road to reach this point, but Marcus had never wavered in his determination to unite humanity under one banner and claim their rightful place as the dominant species in the universe. Your Majesty, the fleet is in position, Admiral Vance reported, saluting crisply. All systems are green. We await your command. Marcus nodded, his piercing blue eyes still fixed on the stars. Excellent. Broadcast my message on all frequencies. I want every corner of the galaxy to hear this. As the Admiral relayed his orders, Marcus took a deep breath, steeling himself for the speech that would echo through history. The hollow camera's word to life, projecting his image to trillions of viewers across the galaxy. People of the Milky Way, Marcus began, his voice deep and resonant. For too long, humanity has been content to hide in the shadows, licking our wounds while lesser species played at empire. No more. Today, we take our rightful place as the rulers of this galaxy. Some of you may seek to resist us. You will fail. The human race has been forged in the fires of war and hardship, and we have emerged stronger than ever. Kneel before us, and you may yet survive. Stand against us, and you will be ground to dust beneath our boots. The choice is yours. As his words faded, Marcus could almost feel the shock waves rippling across the galaxy. Some would despair at the return of the legendary monsters known as humans. Others would foolishly seek to defy him. It mattered not. Humanity's ascension was inevitable, and Marcus would let nothing stand in his way. The first test of his resolve came sooner than expected. Less than an hour after his speech, long-range sensors detected a massive fleet of ships dropping out of hyperspace near the border of human space. Marcus smiled coldly. It seemed the pathetic coalition of allied worlds had scraped together a ragtag armada to challenge humanity's might. They would soon learn the folly of their defiance. Admiral, set a course to intercept that fleet, my Marcus ordered. It's time we teach these upstarts a lesson in the true meaning of power. As the HMS Invictus and its escorts leapt into hyperspace, Marcus allowed himself a moment of satisfaction. This was only the beginning. Under his rule, humanity would become the undisputed masters of the galaxy, and all would tremble before the might of the human empire. But even as he savored his impending triumph, Marcus knew that his greatest challenge still lay ahead. For not all of humanity supported his vision of galactic conquest. His own brother, Prince Alexander, had gathered a sizable faction of dissidents and aliens who sought to resist his rule. They clung to outdated notions of coexistence and cooperation with lesser species, failing to grasp the manifest destiny of the human race. Marcus clenched his fist, his eyes hardening with resolve. He would deal with Alex and his pitiful rebellion soon enough. The galaxy would be his, and not even his own flesh and blood would stand in his way. The reign of Emperor Marcus Aurelius had begun, and the universe would never be the same. As the HMS Invictus emerged from hyperspace, the Coalition fleet came into view. A motley assortment of ships from a dozen different species, their designs as varied as they were inferior to the sleek, deadly vessels of the human navy. Marcus allowed himself a moment of amusement at their pathetic display of defiance. Your Majesty, we're being hailed by the Coalition flagship, Admiral Vance reported. Marcus waved a hand dismissively. Put them through. Let's hear what these fools have to say. The view screen flickered to life, revealing a trio of aliens, a bulbous-headed Ketifirian, a spindly arachnoid, and a reptilian Saurian. They glared at Marcus with a mixture of fear and loathing. Emperor Aurelius, the Ketifirian spoke, its voice trembling slightly. The coalition of allied worlds demands that you withdraw your forces immediately. Your unprovoked aggression will not be tolerated. Marcus threw back his head and laughed, a cold, mirthless sound that sent shivers down the spines of the alien leaders. Unprovoked aggression? You dare lecture me about aggression when your kind have been squatting in our territory for centuries? This galaxy belongs to humanity, 
and we will take what is rightfully ours. You have two choices, surrender unconditionally or be annihilated. I suggest you choose wisely. The Saurian hissed, baring its fangs. We will never surrender to you, human scum. The coalition will fight to the last ship, the last soldier to defend our freedom. So be it, my king. Hoon. Marcus replied coldly. Admiral, target their flagship and fire at will. The HMS Invictus shuddered as its main cannon unleashed a searing beam of energy, slicing through the coalition flagship like a hot knife through butter. The alien vessel exploded in a blinding flash of light, its debris peppering the surrounding ships. Chaos erupted as the coalition fleet scrambled to respond, their weapons fire pattering harmlessly off the Invictus's advanced shields. The human ships moved with ruthless efficiency, picking off the enemy vessels one by one, their superior technology and training making short work of the outmatched aliens. Within minutes, the once proud coalition armada was reduced to a field of shattered wreckage and drifting corpses. Marcus watched the carnage with a grim satisfaction, knowing that this victory would send a powerful message to the rest of the galaxy. Admiral, set a course for the Teferian homeworld, Marcus ordered. It's time we paid them a visit and reminded them of their place in the new order. As the fleet jumped back into hyperspace, Marcus retired to his quarters, his mind already racing with plans for the future. The coalition had been the first to fall, but they would not be the last. One by one, he would bring the alien races to heel until the entire galaxy knelt before the might of the human empire. But even as he plotted his next move, Marcus couldn't shake the nagging thought of his brother Alex and his growing rebellion. He had always known that Alex was too soft, too weak to do what was necessary for the good of humanity. Now his misguided idealism threatened to undermine everything he had worked for. Marcus clenched his jaw, a cold determination settling over him. He would deal with Alex in due time, for now he had an empire to build, a galaxy to conquer, and nothing, not even his own family, would stand in his way. Light years away, on a hidden rebel base, Prince Alexander stood before a gathering of human and alien leaders, his eyes blazing with righteous fury. My brother believes that might make right, that the strong should dominate the weak, he declared, his voice ringing with conviction. But he is wrong. Our strength lies not in conquest, but in unity, in cooperation, not subjugation. We will show the galaxy that there is another way, a better way, and together we will bring an end to my brother's tyranny and restore peace to the stars. The crowd erupted in cheers, their voices joining as one in a chorus of defiance. Alex smiled, feeling a surge of hope and determination. The road ahead would be long and hard, but he knew in his heart that they would prevail. The galaxy would be free, and the dream of a united, peaceful future would become a reality. And so the stage was set for a clash of ideologies, a battle for the very soul of the galaxy. Brother against brother, empire against rebellion, tyranny against freedom, the fate of trillions hung in the balance, and only time would tell who would emerge victorious in this epic struggle for the stars. As the rebellion grew in strength and numbers, Marcus found himself increasingly frustrated by their ability to evade his forces and strike at key targets across the empire. He had underestimated his brother's resourcefulness and the loyalty he inspired in his followers, both human and alien alike. In a bid to crush the rebellion once and for all, Marcus ordered his finest legion, the Obsidian Guard, to hunt down and destroy Alex's hidden base. Led by the ruthless General Theron, a man as cold and unyielding as the armor he wore, the Obsidian Guard set out to scour the galaxy, leaving no stone unturned in their quest for vengeance. But Alex was always one step ahead, thanks in no small part to the efforts of his most trusted ally, a brilliant arachnoid tactician named Ryloth. With Ryloth's keen mind and Alex's inspiring leadership, the rebellion managed to stay one step ahead of the Obsidian Guard, even as they struck blow after blow against the Empire's key installations and supply lines. Marcus grew more and more enraged with each passing day, his once calculating demeanor giving way to a seething, barely contained fury. He lashed out at his subordinates, executing those who failed him and promoting those who showed the most ruthless efficiency in carrying out his orders. As the conflict escalated, the toll on the galaxy's inhabitants grew ever higher. Entire worlds were laid waste, their populations caught in the crossfire between the Empire and the Rebellion. Refugees flooded the space lanes, fleeing the chaos and destruction, 
while those who remained behind were forced to pick sides in a war that seemed to have no end. Alex's heart ached for the suffering of the innocent, but he knew that the only way to end the bloodshed was to topple his brother's regime once and for all. With Ryloth's help, he devised a daring plan to strike at the heart of the Empire itself, a covert mission to infiltrate the capital world of Novaterra and sabotage the Empire's central command network. The mission was fraught with danger, but Alex insisted on leading the strike team himself. Accompanied by a hand-picked group of his most skilled operatives, including the deadly human assassin Kai Ross and the hulking Saurian warrior Raxus, Alex set out to bring an end to his brother's reign of terror. As they made their way through the heavily guarded streets of Nova Terra, Alex and his team faced one perilous obstacle after another. But through a combination of skill, cunning, and sheer determination, they managed to penetrate the central command complex and plant a series of explosive charges that would cripple the Empire's ability to coordinate its forces. Just as they were about to make their escape, however, they were confronted by none other than General Theron himself, flanked by a squad of his most elite Obsidian Guard. A fierce battle erupted, with Alex and his team fighting tooth and nail against the Empire's deadliest warriors. In the end, it was Kai Ross who made the ultimate sacrifice, throwing himself in front of a plasma bolt meant for Alex and giving his life to save his. With tears in his eyes, Alex detonated the charges and fled the complex, the sounds of explosions and alarms ringing in his ears. The sabotage mission was a success, but the cost had been high. As Alex and his surviving team members regrouped with the rest of the rebellion, they knew that the final battle was fast approaching. Marcus would not let this insult go unanswered, and he would stop at nothing to crush the rebellion once and for all. But Alex was ready. With the support of his loyal followers and the strength of his convictions, he would face his brother one last time in a battle that would determine the fate of the galaxy itself. The stage was set for a showdown that would echo through the ages, a clash of wills and ideals that would shape the course of history for generations to come. The final battle began with a massive Imperial assault on the rebel stronghold of Catafiris Prime. Marcus had finally discovered the location of Alex's base, thanks to the interrogation of a captured rebel operative, and he was determined to crush the rebellion in one swift stroke. As the Imperial fleet descended upon Catafiris Prime, Alex and his allies prepared for the fight of their lives. They knew that they were outnumbered and outgunned, but they also knew that they had something the Empire could never match, the unbreakable spirit of those who fought for freedom and justice. As the battle raged in the skies above, Alex led a daring ground assault on the Imperial landing zones, hoping to disrupt their invasion before it could gain a foothold. With Ryloth and Raxus at his side, he fought his way through the waves of Imperial troopers, their weapons blazing and their hearts filled with the fire of righteous fury. But even as they made progress, Alex knew that the true test was yet to come. Marcus himself had landed on the planet, accompanied by his elite Praetorian Guard, and he was making his way towards the Rebel Command Center with a single-minded determination. As the two brothers finally came face to face, the weight of their shared history hung heavy in the air. Marcus, his once handsome features twisted by hatred and rage, glared at Alex with a fury that could melt steel. You have defied me for the last time, brother, he snarled, his hand resting on the hilt of his plasma sword. I will take great pleasure in crushing your pathetic rebellion and watching you beg for mercy at my feet. Alex met his gaze unflinchingly, his own weapon held at the ready. I will never beg, Marcus. I will never surrender to your tyranny. This ends here, one way or another. With a roar of rage, Marcus charged forward, his blade flashing in a deadly arc. Alex met him head on, their weapons clashing in a blinding flurry of sparks and plasma. Around them, the battle raged on, rebel and imperial forces locked in a desperate struggle for survival. For what seemed like an eternity, the two brothers dueled, their skills evenly matched and their wills unbreakable. But as the fight wore on, Alex began to gain the upper hand, his righteous fury giving him the strength to push back against Marcus's relentless assault. In a final desperate gambit, Marcus lunged forward his blade aimed at Alex's heart, but he was ready for him, sidestepping the blow and bringing his own weapon down in a swift, decisive strike. Marcus stumbled back, his eyes wide with shock and pain as he fell to his knees before him. It's over, Marcus, Alex said softly, his voice tinged with sorrow and regret. Your empire is finished. The galaxy will be free once more. 
But even in defeat, Marcus's pride would not allow him to surrender. With a final defiant roar, he lunged forward, his blade flashing towards Alex's throat. In that instant, he knew what he had to do. With a heavy heart, Alex brought his own weapon up in a swift, merciful stroke, ending his brother's life in a single, clean blow. As his body crumpled to the ground, Alex felt a wave of grief and loss wash over him, mingled with the bittersweet knowledge that he had done what was necessary for the greater good. In the aftermath of the battle, as the rebel forces mopped up the last pockets of Imperial resistance, Alex stood before the assembled leaders of the Free Galaxy, his head held high and his voice ringing with conviction. Today we have struck a blow for freedom and justice that will echo throughout the ages, he declared. But our work is not yet done. We must rebuild what has been lost and forge a new future based on cooperation, compassion, and mutual respect. Together we will create a galaxy where all beings, human and alien alike, can live in peace and prosperity. As the crowd erupted in cheers and applause, Alex felt a sense of hope and purpose that he had never known before. The road ahead would be long and difficult, but with the support of his friends and allies, he knew that anything was possible. And so a new era began, one in which the galaxy would be guided not by the iron fist of tyranny, but by the gentle hand of unity and understanding. Under Alex's wise and compassionate leadership, the wounds of the past would slowly heal and a brighter future would dawn for all the peoples of the stars.